Okay, so for our first foray into doing a triple integral, we are going to imagine that we've got a rectangular block, okay? And so my rectangular block here has width A, has length B, and has height C. And we're going to assume it's rotating around its center of mass right here. Okay, rotating in the plane of the thing. Otherwise, it's going to be more complicated. But we're going to assume it's rotating in the plane. So all we have to do is do that integral, uh, the triple integral of rho times r squared dx dy dz. Okay, so if you look down on this thing, so instead of looking at it obliquely like I was doing before, if you look down on the top of it, then this, the axis of rotation is right there in the middle, and if we got some little dm over here, that's r. Well, notice if this is x and y, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Okay, so just Pythagorean theorem. And so that, that kind of sets the stage. So I is going to be this integral of rho x squared plus y squared dx dy dz. Well, rho comes out of the integral, and we're integrating a polynomial, so you just integrate each part of it. So this becomes rho times the integral x squared dx dy dz plus the integral of y squared dx dy dz. And so the limits of the integration are going to be minus a over 2 to a over 2 for the x, minus b over 2 to b over 2 for the y, minus c over 2 to c over 2 for the z. So for the x, minus a over 2 to a over 2, for the y, minus b over 2 to b over 2. For the z, uh, c minus c over 2 to c over 2. So to do this integral, what we have to do is we have to basically do each little part of it. So for this part right here, we have the integral minus a over 2 to a over 2 of x squared dx. Well, gosh. That's not a hard integral right there. So what is that? That's going to be x cubed over 3 evaluated at minus a over 2 to a over 2. So that's going to be 1 third times a over 2 cubed minus a negative a over 2 cubed. Okay, so what is that? That is going to be equal to 1 third times a cubed over 8 plus, because it's negative, negative, a cubed over 8. So that comes out to be 1 twelfth a cubed. Okay, so fantastic. So i is rho times the integral 1 twelfth a cubed dy dz plus this integral of y squared dx dy dz. So now let's do that integral. So now we have the integral from minus a over 2 to a over 2 of y squared dx. And we say, well, gosh, we're not integrating over y. We're integrating over x. y doesn't depend on x, so it comes out of the integral. So this is just minus a over 2 to a over 2 dx. So that is just going to be equal to x evaluate minus a over 2 to a over 2. So that's y squared times a over 2 minus a negative a over 2. That's just a. So this comes out to be a y squared. Okay. So now this is rho times the integral of 1 twelfth a cubed dy dx plus the integral of a y squared dy dz. I said this is dz up here. Okay, so now we're ready to do this integral. 
So we have the integral from minus b over 2 to b over 2 of 112 a cubed dy. Well, the a cubed over 12 comes out, and we just have the integral minus b over 2 to b over 2 dy. Well, we know what that is. We just did this integral for x's. That when we did the remember when we did the integral minus a over two to a over two dx, that was just a. So this is just going to be b. So this is going to be a cubed b over twelve. Okay. So that gets us this integral right there. Well, what about this integral right here? So that's going to be integral minus b over 2 to b over 2, a y squared dy. So that's going to be a times integral minus b over 2 to b over 2, y squared dy. Well, well, hey, we just did that for, we just did that for the x integral, right? So we just said that integral minus a over 2 to a over 2, x squared dx was equal to a cubed over 12. So that means this is going to be equal to b cubed over 12. Okay, so that means we now have that integral over here. So we can plug all this in. So i equals rho times the integral of minus c over 2 to c over 2 of a cubed b over 12 dz plus the integral minus c over 2 to c over 2 a b cubed over 12 dz. So now we just do this integral. dz. Well, all, that, all this stuff is constant, so it comes out. a cubed b over 12, integral minus c over 2 to c over 2 dz, that's just, this This is just c. So that's going to be a cubed b c over 12. The other integral over here is going to be a b cubed over 12 dz, so that's going to be a b cubed over 12, integral minus c over 2 to c over 2 dz, that's just c. Okay, that's just c, so this comes out to be a b cubed c over 12. So our, inter our, 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 our i now looks like rho times a cubed b c over 12 plus a b cubed c over 12. Okay, so I can rewrite this as 1 12 times rho times a, b, c, times a squared plus b squared. Okay, well, a times b times c, length times width times height is volume. Volume times density is mass. So this comes out to be 1 12 mass a squared plus b squared. Okay, so what we just calculated was that for this thing rotating around its center of mass, I is 112 mass times A squared plus B squared. Okay. Now, what about other shapes? Okay. Suppose you had like a sphere, okay, and you want to find I there. Well, now this is going to be the same thing, you know, of rho uh, uh, r squared dx dy dz. Uh, uh, again, the r squared would be x squared plus y squared. The problem here is this is not a rectangular object. So if you're at different z's, then you, the, the, the result of the integral is different because now you're going to different x's and y's as your maximums. So that makes this a substantially more complicated integral. So how do you do substantially more complicated integrals? You get someone else to do them. Okay, so you, you avoid them. I mean, that, that's the idea. Uh, integration by avoidance. So what you can do is you realize that, that normally you're going to have a variety of shapes. You're going to have a rectangular object. 
you're going to have a spherical object you're going to have a long rod or something a, a long object here uh you're going to have a hoop you know uh, uh uh there's several different shapes that you normally do you might have a cylinder and the cylinder could rotate around this axis or it could rotate around that axis well there's a of different shapes but the thing is that most things we're going to do in this class are the same kind of shapes over and over again and it's already been done for you so this is going to be page 274 of your textbook there's a chart that has all those different shapes and it says if you rotate it around this particular axis then that then it gives you the eye around that axis so it's already been done for you so this is integration by looking it up in the chart where it's already been done for you and so uh again now 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 the really hard what if you had a rectangular block with a hemisphere sitting on top of it and the rectangular block is A, B, C. The hemisphere is some radius R. The rectangular block has mass 1. The hemisphere is mass 2. So now you have a really difficult integral. So now the integral is going to be this triple integral R squared uh, uh, rho dx, dy, dz, where the limit of the integrals is one thing for here and something for a different set of z up here. So that means that, that it's going to be one thing for one part of z, another thing for another part of z. This is really, really complicated, but wait. Remember what an integral is. It's a really fancy sum, right? So that means that all we need to do, because it's a fancy sum, is we do I of the rectangular block plus I of the hemisphere. And we look up and we find that the I of the rectangular block is 1 12th times the mass A squared plus B squared. And for a hemisphere, it's going to be 2 fifths times the mass times r squared. Okay, there's your answer. We looked up those two things from a chart. Okay, now, now the chart on, on, on the book doesn't have a hemisphere, but but I can give you on, on the test or something, I'll give you the eye, and it turns out the eye of a sphere and eye of a hemisphere are the same thing. Uh, uh, a hemisphere is just half a sphere, and so you just have half the mass. And so it, it turns out to be pretty much the same thing. But this is how we do this. So now we have a way of finding very complicated rotational moments. And, and it's, it's uh, 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 all you have to do is say, well, this very complicated thing is just adding up some standard shapes. And you stick the standard shapes on there, and then you just like add. And so that's, that's, that makes this very, comp very complicated problem really very, very simple. Okay. All right, so that's how we do figuring out rotational moments or moments of inertia, rotational moments. I don't really care what you call it for complicated shapes. Uh, basically, uh, in this class, you're not having to do all the, the fancy three-dimensional integrals. Uh, you just have to remember that, aha, it's been done for you, and you go look it up.